I'm the brawler, Brian Malonis. And I'm the Beer City Bruiser, and together, we're the bouncers. And when we crack a couple of cold ones, what do we like to watch, Bruiser? Man, we love to watch Wrestling With Regret. You know, dogs and wrestlers have had a complicated relationship over the decades, which I've talked about at some length here on this channel, but I gotta be honest, folks, I'm having a real hard time this week coming up with a way to introduce this episode. Usually I have my big grand opening statement and I find some way to tie it all back into the topic at hand, but I just don't have the jam to be clever enough to come up with a way to introduce the dog wedding. Well, uh, it's a 2015 romantic comedy starring Matt Bloom, the head trainer of the Performance Center, and who went by almost a half dozen different names in WWE, and a German actress named Rosalie Thomas. And it's about dogs getting married and pickles. What even is this? I always try and give movies like this a chance. Now, truthfully, I'm overjoyed that something so random and delightful and cursed as this thing exists in our world and that I get to watch it for my job. But I'll admit, before I pressed play, I had my reservations about the movie's quality, especially when director James Lefkowitz told Bloom, the lead actor and one of the producers, not to bother with acting lessons. The rationale was that because Albert had been a wrestler for so long that he already knows how to act. While pro wrestling is a form of acting, I would argue it's not the same thing as being the romantic lead in the motion picture. And not to mention, as a wrestler, Albert was never really known for his oratory skills. Not only is Prince Albert a professional terrorist, he's a professional demolitionist. And when I knock down this big show, I will be the new skyscraper in this town. Speaking of acting chops, I love the marketing on the back of the DVD cover that describes Thomas as a Best Actress winner, though the specific award in question is a little hard to find. Ah, oh, well, she's the best somewhere. I will give the producers of the movie credit for their campaign to apparently get their friends and family to create accounts on film websites and make it rain positive reviews. Over on Rotten Tomatoes, this bad boy's got a 100% audience rating, and on IMDb, it's got an 8.6... <laughs> Sorry, sorry, an 8.6 rating. Okay, now obviously the sample size is a bit too small to compare, but here are some other movies that have that rating as well. The Matrix, Goodfellas, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Seven, Silence of the Lambs, A New Hope, and many others. That's right, according to your totally average and objective citizens of Earth on IMDb, this movie that's about a dog wedding, called The Dog Wedding, ranks right up there with them. So now we all get to see if they're correct in their assessments. And I hope that none of these guys would, would lie to me about this sort of thing. The film opens up with a credit for the Queen Kong Dog Church of America, which as far as I can tell from my research is not a real thing. I just wish this movie was also not real so I wouldn't have to review it. Our story begins outside a pickle factory, which, <laughs> hey, slow down with the funny stuff movie. I'm trying to pace myself here. There she is. Oh, didn't expect to hear narration. There she is, my dear mum. They'll never get to know the real Ulrika Schmidt. That's her father's doing, I'm afraid. He's been grooming her to rule his pickle empire. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's been grooming her to rule his pickle empire. Well, you have my attention. Anything else you want to say before we don't hear from you again till the end of the film? I want the world to see what I know to be true. But how much can a dog Really do. Oh shit, and my Shyamalan twist right out the gate, son! This is Ulrika Schmidt, a no-nonsense businesswoman who's tasked with shutting down the factory that was bought out by her father's company. But all her years of business school and working under her father couldn't prepare her for capitalism's greatest enemy, down-home folksiness. I can't believe you're here, this is great. If you're here for the reason that we think you are, please come talk to us. I think we can change your mind. Everybody! <laughs> I will return on Monday. Acht, all this kindness is too much. The goggles, they do nothing. 
Elsewhere, here comes local wrestler Matt Pierce, played by Bloom, as he takes his dog to the park. It's clear he still has some moves to get out of his system after wrestling a sweet tea in 2013. And what are the odds stuffy business lady Ulrika is taking her bulldog to the same park? But wait a second, if she's from Germany, then why did she bring her dog with her on this international business trip? I, I mean, the paperwork alone. The paperwork! The doggos break the ice by getting it on in the middle of the park. Then that really doubles down on the awkward by going right into a sales pitch for breeding them. You didn't cut the testicles, so it's driving them insane. So, uh, you looking to breed? Mm. Small balls. Dog parks. Come for the exercise, stay for the conversation. So, uh, I'm Matthew Pierce. That's a call back to the start of the scene when Matt very sloppily picked up some goopy dog crap with what looks to be a candy bar wrapper. How he made it this long without looking for a sink is beyond me, but in true wrestling fashion, Ulrika responds with a worker handshake. So, uh, Ulrika, this might be a little forward. I mean, you've been so discreet and casual up until now, I'm afraid that if you're forward with me, my heart can't take it. What do you say we have a marriage and make some babies? Okay, Quincy, it's time to go. Look, I know a lot of wrestlers aren't really known for their social skills, but dude! No, it turns out that Pierce wants the dogs to get married as a symbolic gesture before they breed. It turns out that his late mother, played by Queen Kong from the original Glow, ran a dog wedding business and hoped to have her bulldog Queenie wed and bred before she were dead. The dog was left to Matt, and he's been on a mission to fulfill his mother's dying wish ever since. Look at this. Queenie and Prince? Soulmates. I know she's wearing heels in this scene, but how is she almost as tall as him? Ulrika's not having any of this and leaves, but not before Matt gives her a ticket to the show he's working. Back at her place, Ulrika talks business and dog breeding with her dad, because those are two things that go very well together. In case they've not made it obvious he's a pickle magnate, may I present Pickle Tie! Oh, and folks, if you enjoy movie conversations that don't move the plot along, but endlessly talk about the pickle business, then ho ho, you're gonna love their scenes together. Yeah, in America, no union. That's wonderful. I will be in Arizona for three more weeks to oversee the shutdown. I need you in Peoria. Peoria is lactofermentation. Temecula and Asheville hot brine. They, they are incompatible. We acquired Mrs. Clients for the name, not for their ideas. Reassign the accounts, transfer the volume, close the facility. It's very simple. Yes, pickle business talk and commemorative plates are my shit. I don't know what's more upsetting, the lengths this guy will go to to eat with his dog, or the dog is better behaved in the high chair than my kids were. Ulrika makes her way to the wrestling show, where we get a glimpse of what the Arizona indie scene has to offer. Hey, more people in the crowd than there are who have seen this film. Matt wrestles as the Manimal, sounds like a lawsuit to me, as he takes on Don Vitale. Ulrika catches Matt's eye as they wrestle near the crowd. You win! Sweet. Ah. Must have been kind of confusing for other fans to see the big wrestler shout that to a random person with zero context. How often do you think that happens? What the? Rishishishish. The password is carrots. What the? The busk. Sabuba. Oh, hello. It's for you. Rishishishish. So anyway, Ulrika agrees to the canine nuptials, and we see what's essentially an engagement party at a big house with a pool and some local workers and other extras. Oh God, where have I seen this scene before? No, I gotta save it for Tampa. I gotta save it for Tampa. There's some interesting background footage of wrestlers practicing body slams at the party. You know, like wrestlers obviously do, of course. But what exactly is this game they're playing? What the hell is the almighty Sheik doing with Albert's head? This is not what I expected of you when I was your manager seven years ago, Sheik. Now let's see some more of that rockin' chemistry between Matt and Ulrika. Your team is very international. Oh yeah, I, I've wrestled all over the world. What's your profession? Engineer by training. Now in business. Come on, Matt, why are things so tense with you guys? Maybe you should talk more about her dog's balls. That'll get the convo going. But it's Ulrika who knows how to really get the party started. Shots of vodka and pickle juice. Ugh, sounds disgusting. There's no way that's a real... D uh, huh. Well, either way, not my thing. Nice ink! Now, Albert, it's not nice to lie. Get me that guy's name. That's some nice work. I designed it myself. You, um... 
proud of that, are you? Things liven up once the wrestlers start throwing chops. Okay, now that's something I've seen at wrestler parties. And suddenly, Ulrika's busting out the kind of dance moves that Elaine Benes wishes she could pull off. Check this out. <clears throat> she sure loosened up. I'm gonna bet that alcohol wasn't the only kind of gimmick at that party. They all fall into the pool like it were an episode of Nitro at Daytona Beach. And the next thing we know, Ulrika's in a toddler bed being awoken by a call from her dad. We made a toast. I guess I overdid it. I see. Odd place for a dun-dun. Matt and Ulrika run some dog wedding errands like taking wedding pictures and buying dog treats from a dude named White Owl. Matthew, 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 allow me, allow me, please. Who, who's the boss? Stop, stop, stop it. Okay, can we just go like one scene in this movie? One, without meeting some new character who has like a goddamn alien? I'm Lucia! Oh, no. And then the guy starts yelling at her in two frequencies. You must beware the path oh, you're ow, on. Ow. It's not your dream. That's freaky as hell. We haven't even got to the peyote scene yet. Oh, I'm sorry, getting ahead of myself. There's a peyote scene in this. Would you like to come up for some cactus tea? What is no, cactus no. tea? Ow. Peyote. After the old hippie sniffs Ulrika and yells at her like a demon, he offers to get her fucked up in the middle of the day, and she accepts the offer without hesitation. Laugh it up, Uli. I got engaged before you. It's time for Ulrika to pack her bags because she's going on a trip. Here the filmmakers try really hard to create a psychedelic experience with a non-existent budget. Maybe if they didn't spend all their money on the talking dog or an exploding pickle with her father's face on it, they could have done a lot more with the scene. I think we're gonna pump out some real champs. I think we're gonna pump out some real champs. Ah, look at you. Subtle little plug for NXT there. Sly dog you. Boy, we're really staying on this shot, huh? Pretty long take they're doing here. Oh snap, she was in the background at first and now she's in the casket? That's why the take was so long. Okay, points for a clever shot. Ulrika then gets buried in pickles, finally bringing the avant-garde student film portion of the movie to a close. Ulrika says what I'm feeling right about now. <laughs> Well, time to return to the plot, I guess. At the factory, the workers try and sell Ulrika on a brand new pickled cactus product, which practically turns into a commercial for it. With eggs and soup and salad, it's good in tacos and burritos. They are low in sugar, help lower cholesterol, and provide natural fiber. Sure enough, Uli likes the new product and works with them to try and produce more. As Daddy Dieter grows frustrated with Uli's lack of progress, Tensai musters up the courage to ask her out on a second date. They go out to eat at a restaurant filled with people dressed as nondescript anime characters featuring live entertainment. She's Suzu, and he's Miki. That's why they're Suzu Miki. And we're here at their concert because they did music for this movie. Ulrika reveals her daddy issues and does some serious projecting toward Matt as the dinner date begins to break down. He would say, Look at her, sitting there with that monster. You think I'm a monster? No, I think you're a great, kind, wonderful person. And you can tell I'm authentic when I say this. We Germans are well known for our effusive expression. Albert tries a comforting peck on the forehead, and Ulrika rightly gives him shit for it, finally talking him through the process of kissing a girl on the mouth. Let's just hope he hasn't been practicing on his dog. After a fun montage with said dogs, you know the supposed reason for this movie, we cut to an intimate scene with Matt and Ulrika that's abruptly ended when her father decides to drop in. Are you trying to ruin my life? No, I'm, I'm 35 years old. I'm finished disappearing out the back door. Ha, <laughs> 35, what a rib. They awkwardly try and cover up the nature of their relationship, but Dieter's having none of it. Not only is he mad that his daughter hasn't fired anyone yet, stuffy business dad thinks Matt's dog Queenie is unfit for breeding. That is your decision and it will tell us a lot about the future. This is your reminder that two of the biggest plot points in this movie are pickles and dogs having sex. And we continue. Matt's upset that Uli seems to be taking her father's side on the issue of the wedding, as the ritual means a lot to him. I have been overworked in making poor decisions. I have not been myself. What have you been having the time of your life? I was on drugs. No doubt the transcript of a conversation between the two writers of this movie as they were putting the script together. I wish you the best in your future endeavors. Ooh, that line's especially cutting to a wrestler. Did the writers mean to do that or was it just dumb luck? 
Now comes the part of the movie where everything goes darkest timeline on us. Ulrika's back to business and joins her father in shutting down the factory, while a heartbroken Matt takes advantage of the Greenies and alienates his closest friends. Get Quinya stud, knock her up, and move on with your life. Damn. At a fancy yeah. resort, we find a sad... Oh, we find a sad Ulrika... Yeah! Oh. Anyway, Dieter tries to motivate his daughter by bringing up her accomplishments in the rising company as his hair changes wildly from shot to shot. It's tough. I know it. If it wasn't, everybody would be in the pickle business. Schmitz won't taste in a gar for a thousand years. Is he trying to pull an Ian McDermott from Revenge of the Sith? The dad tries to make Ulrika happy by putting on a dog wedding of his own, but with a different dog and owner. She's upset that her dad doesn't get the significance of the ceremony, ditches him, and heads right to the arena where the manimal's in action. Matt is so distracted by his love that he ends up losing the match via a simple back suplex. Weak. But then they go and have some nice off-camera sex. Tight. Back at the old pickle factory, the bosses there declare they want to buy it back. Ulrika's on their side, but warns them about the risks involved. It's its reinvestment, many obstacles. Statistically, the most likely outcome is failure and heartbreak. The American dream. Oh, great line. Uli then decides to help the managers by joining them in their bid. After hashing it out in German, Dieter finally relents and lets them buy back the factory and get to sell them those magical pickled cacti, rich in vitamins and minerals with no added sugar and... Damn, now I'm beginning to sound like an ad for them. With Big Pickle finally defeated, it's time for the dog wedding to begin. You know, I get why Matt's in full manimal gimmick here because his mother did it too when she ran the weddings, but what's strongman John's excuse for going topless? Unlike most other weddings involving wrestlers, this one goes off without a hitch, and now Queenie and Prince can have as many litters of puppies as they want without being judged by a vengeful doggy god. And that was the dog wedding. The dog wedding... One nice thing I'll say about the movie is it's got a very diverse cast, and I don't just mean in terms of skin color. You've got young, old, wrestlers, non-wrestlers, a lot of non-actors by the look of it, folks from countries all across the world, and not to mention the dogs. If nothing else, that's pretty cool at least, and yay for wrestling representation, I guess. But despite having a premise this wacky, the delivery of the story is played relatively straight. It's a predictable formula that's been done a million times before, and this movie does almost nothing interesting with it. Our pair of co-stars have moments of brilliance in terms of chemistry, but nothing consistent. Thomas's character barely seems to like her dog, much less her love interest. And not to sound xenophobic or anything, but why was the decision made to make the big evil pickle factory run by the dad a German one? The film trope of corporate mass layoffs can work with any larger company. Tommy Boy taught us that. The fact that Ulrika and Dieter were German didn't play any role in the story and could have been played by anyone else, preferably without accents that were sometimes so thick you could hardly make out what they were saying. Maybe I'm not forward thinking enough, but I don't think the world's quite ready for a clash of worlds like pickle business and professional wrestling. And if you don't believe me, ask Joey Ryan. But in all seriousness, I feel there are at least a dozen other ways you can tell the story of a woman's independence and sexual awakening involving big burly men and bulldogs without having to go with something as random as... He's been grooming her to rule his pickle empire. The dog wedding is a cute and relatively unique concept that probably could work, but the pieces that make up the larger film all need improvement. It's not a god-awful film, but I'm damn sure not going to give it an 8.6 on IMDb. It should surprise no one that Matt Bloom does far better work training the future stars of WWE than being in a movie like this. But I don't know, um, what'd you think of it? Oh yeah! Huh. Never thought of it that way before. <laughs> Here comes the big dog! Real mature.